Growing up, I've always had this misconception that disciplined people either don't have desires or have removed their desires. Like my ultimate image of discipline is a monk who only eats tofu and grass, who wants nothing other than some air and a serene mind. But while meeting disciplined people in real life, I realized that it's not that they don't have desires; it's more like they desire strongly for a future reward, and they can anticipate that future reward coming, which enables them to ignore. Current pleasures, or using big words, delayed gratification. Why is it that some people are so good at delayed gratification, while others suck? Well, some people are just not disciplined, which is not wrong. Like I agree that sometimes we are just lazy or in a slump. But what about environmental causes? In the K drama True Beauty, there is this iconic scene where the main girl eats lunch in the school cafeteria. At first, she does not touch the meat, not because she dislikes it, but because she wants to save it for later. Tonkatsu is in fact her favorite part, so she wants to savor it at the end. Delayed gratification. But just as she's about to relish that alluring pork cutlet, love interest number two sweeps in, takes it, and eats it. <laughs> I mean, this scene in the context of the drama is hilarious, and do- was only doing it out of good intentions. But if this were a real life setting, I couldn't help but wonder if that pattern of behavior repeated for a few more times, would she still practice delay gratification with her lunch? Probably not. If I were her, I would start by devouring the meat so that it doesn't get taken again by some dumbhead. So with delayed gratification, the delayed part is only one part of the equation. What's Rarely talked about is the gratification aspect. We need to believe that there will be gratification in the future in order to resist current temptations. With this in mind, let's now talk about the famous marshmallow experiment mentioned by pretty much every self-improvement tuber. So, 1970s, some kids a room with a marshmallow. If they eat the marshmallow now, they end up getting just that one marshmallow. But if they discipline themselves and wait a bit, they get two marshmallows, as promised. By the adults, but how do I know if the adults will fulfill their promises? So maybe, just maybe, the key to winning this experiment lies not only in their level of discipline, but also in their trust in the future. I will wait for a second marshmallow, but only if I know there will be a second marshmallow. Unfortunately, sometimes our trust in the future can be shattered by our environment. For example, in some companies, you're efficient at work and you're always faster and better. Then what? Promotion like your boss promised? Nope, you're assigned more work, the same repetitive work with no end in sight. It's precisely because you excel at this that your boss keeps you indefinitely in the same role. Or that overly ambitious math teacher who rewards everyone's progress by giving out more and harder homework. In 2012, an updated version of the marshmallow test was performed in Rochester. This time, before the actual test, the kids were divided to two groups. In one group, the kids were given a broken promise, so the adults promised them something which they didn't deliver. Whereas in the other group, the adults fulfilled their promise. Then they did the actual marshmallow test, and you guessed it, the first group were much less patient and waited a shorter time for the second marshmallow. So yeah, in Environments where we're constantly given false promises do undermine our ability at delay gratification. Perhaps the most ruthless and traumatizing environment is not work or the classroom because you can always get another job or wait for the next teacher. The most devastating place, arguably, is a non-supportive family environment, best exemplified by Gendo Shinji's dad. Shinji is not a disciplined or motivated person. In fact, he's almost become the epitome of the whiny, weak anime protagonist. If we evaluate him by the standard of the self-improvement community, then undoubtedly he fits the archetype of a loser. Not only is he never enthusiastic about his work, he also attempts to ditch everything and run away. Not just once, but twice. Why couldn't he stop whining and be more motivated? The reason can be multi-layered, but I would like to focus on just one. Not only has Gando never bothered to help his son establish delay gratification, he destroys it. 
Episode one. Out of the blue, Shinji is pressured into piloting this intimidating machine and fighting this unknown creature without being given any promise of any future reward in any shape or form. What does Shinji get in return for risking his life in combat? Nothing. Not even a cheap hug. Some may argue, oh, but maybe his dad wants to cultivate in him the ability to derive motivation from the task itself rather than from external rewards, like how Doctor Huberman suggests. You can tell yourself the effort part is the good part, but to do that, Shinji needs to at least know what the meaning of this whole thing is. Like, who are these angels, and why are humans fighting them? There has been zero explanation, zero exposition. Sure, it's implied that the angels represent a threat, so defeating them seems like the right thing to do. But that belief of "I'm doing this for justice" gets completely shattered in episode 18 when Shinji is coerced into fighting his classmate Toji. At that moment, all meaning. Is lost. There is nothing slightly gratifying about any of this job, so he runs away. And honestly, why wouldn't he? Mata ni ge dasu no ka. Omae ni wa shitsubou shita. Having grown up with a dad just like Gendo, I feel the sin viscerally. My dad would never give his kids any sort of positive feedback or affirmation, let alone rewards. For him, we are always inadequate, undeserving. I remember working really hard in middle school, doing all the practice questions I could find to win this math competition. When I brought the trophy home, the only response I got from him was, "Oh, you got lucky. I'm surprised they give it to someone not smart like you." Um. Thanks, Dad. By the way, that's on you, cause you gave me the jeans, which I didn't actually say I didn't have the guts to. Instead, I just went back to my room and whined Shinji style. And the worst part is, even when I no longer live with him, like I've moved out ever since college and stuff, this sense of inadequacy still lingers. A neuroscience paper published on NIH suggests that the emotional availability of parents has an impact on their children's neural development. Parents who are emotionally neglectful. And hostile can generate long-term adverse effects on their children's stress mechanisms, the neural endocrine system, and even brain functions related to emotional processing. On the other hand, numerous studies have shown that words of encouragement from parents and teachers tend to have significant positive impact on students' academic performance, and it remains impactful even through college. Research shows that students who received academic encouragement in college achieved better efficacy at their Studies. So often we emphasize the power of discipline, the power of willpower, but perhaps what precedes that is the power of confidence—not the kind of narcissist, arrogant confidence, but confidence in the sense that you don't feel weighed down by doubts about the future or your trashy self-esteem. With all this being said, I don't want this video to just be "oh, the system can screw us over and we're doomed." Although it's still an ongoing process, there have been a couple of things that help me slowly restore that delayed gratification. I've always believed that the rain from yesterday doesn't have to drench you today, so hopefully, they can be somewhat helpful for you as well. There are activities that are inherently gratifying, so they don't need to rely on an external source to provide that future reward. You put in the work, and the satisfaction will naturally flow in your body. For example, exercise and cold showers are commonly mentioned, but such activities are actually quite plentiful, in my opinion. For example, doing anything that's creative, like drawing, painting, calligraphy, writing, filming, etc., or even reading. Books may help, including novels. There are novels that take significant build-up and foreshadowing in the early chapters to prepare for the climax later on. I've been sort of consciously doing some of these things to relearn delay gratification. On the contrary, there are activities that deplete future satisfaction. Like the more we do it, the worse we feel, such as social media scrolling. So maybe avoid it. This is definitely easier said than done, though, because when I'm like a teenager, it's not like I can just pack up and leave. I'll be sleeping on the street. In situations where avoidance is impossible and open communication doesn't work, such as the case with my dad, I would build a mental block to filter out derogatory slash devaluation remarks, sort of like those AT fills in Evangelion. So whatever mean stuff he says, I don't digest any of it. 
Are you your own worst critic? I mean, don't get me wrong. Constructive self-criticism is certainly necessary, but there's a huge difference between that and mindless self-bashing. The latter is like the effect of a bad parent. If a parent only celebrates their children's success, only supports them when things go well, but then berate and demean them during their setbacks, we、we'll、probably all agree this is bad parenting. But ironically, we sometimes treat ourselves in the exact same manner. If things are going fine and smooth, we will respect ourselves. If we encounter any sort of failure, we will start self-dissing and feeling all trashy and crappy. But there are all kinds of setbacks you can face in pretty much any endeavor, and I don't know. Sometimes the economy can just be bad. So one thing I've been trying to do is to train my mind to be more like the good parent, not the bad parent. Good parents are like vessels; they accept not just victories but also downtimes, and that's what I want my mind to be—not an internalized version of my cynical dad, but the supportive parent that I've always longed for. And that concludes the video. I hope. Hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching.